That wraps up our 145 pound bracket. And it is now time to bring out our 170 pound bracket. Out of the blue corner, training in Austin, Texas, representing B Team, Jay Rodriguez. Jay Rodriguez makes his who's number one return. The B Team representative fighting out of Austin, Texas, known for his lightning fast wrestling, buggy chokes, and a whole lot more. Yeah, so versatile, this young man. Like, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, it uses wrestling. He's also his defensive capabilities, the uh, ability to get himself out of hot water, which is most likely going to be necessary in this con contest. But um, nevertheless, always, always exciting. And out of the red corner, training out of Jun GIE, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Representing Escola, Milky Galvao, Mika Galvao. Mika Galvao is back on the Who's Number One stage. Originally from Manaus, Amazonas, Brazil, representing Team Milky Galvao Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, one, one of, uh, he is so complex and dynamic in his game. Very hard to prepare for a young man like this, because you just don't know what he's gonna do. He kind of does everything. He just, he's so good on the feet, so good on the ground, can get it, submissions out of everywhere. So um, we are in for a treat, I'm sure. All right, let's take a look at this welterweight tail of the tape. Jay Rodriguez, 21 years old, weighed in at five foot 11. Mika Galvao, 19 years old, five foot, eight, five foot eight, both weighed in at 170 pounds. Let's get things over to Gabriel Martins, our referee, to kick things off. This match is one of the most anticipated of tonight's event, Sean Williams. We have Mika Galvao, the man from an house, one of the most unorthodox grapplers. People have been looking at this kid since he was a blue belt, you know, tapping out black belts in challenge matches in Brazil. Then you got Jay Rodriguez fighting out one of the toughest gyms in Austin, Texas, Texas the B team. You know, he's got Nicky Rod, he's got Craig Jones, he's got all those phenomenal grapplers there. Just such a clash of styles. Yeah, you're right. I, it's J-Rod's wrestling it looks incredible. He's got very good ducks, which is good. He's trying to get to the back. That left side, uh, you know, depending on the grip over there, uh, if, if Galvão isn't too careful, could be exposed for a duck, but and you, and you know, we saw J-Rod recently with one of the craziest submission defenses ever in quintet. Um, you know, Mika Galvao has been, said he's been studying, you know, J-Rod a little bit. He's looking at the footage. So we'll see what kind of submission attempts Mika could look to go for. I think judging that comment, it would make more sense to look for him to go for the back, and, you know, go for rear naked chokes and stuff like that, because it's going to be really, really challenging to submit J-Rod with an arm bar. Yeah, or maybe use the arm lock to get to something yeah. different. But, uh... Man, I gotta admit, I, I got goosebumps. This is one of those matches that, you know, a lot of people have been buzzing about. When it got announced online, I think everyone knew that this was gonna happen. And just think the next match, PJ Barge, <laughs> Andrew Tackett, 
winner faces the winner of this match. This 170 pound bracket is stacked. It is. It's unbelievable. The J Rod doing a good job positionally. Like, there's a nice little shot. But he's getting hands on well. Oh, nice duck. But, uh, J Rod's got that underhook to see if he'll try to throw by. But, the, you know, you still have to get by the judo defense of Mika Galvan or the flying arm locks. I mean, you get an underhook, and it doesn't necessarily mean a lot with a, with his overhook. So, there's a nice little duck under attempt. Nice arm drag attempt there by J Rod. Yeah, but Nika nearly redragged that. They've both had interesting years. You know, J-Rod actually had a, I believe he had a collarbone injury, maybe, maybe if I'm mistaken, in the earlier part of the year, so he took a little time off, and then he's been really active in the last month or so. And then Mika has been um, competing consistently throughout the year, gi and no gi, but he had a severe injury with his knee, rehabbed it, he's back in action here. And interesting, like I said, he's you know going out there competing gi and no gi, same weekends, um, event to event, but he's been off for a year here at Who's Number One. So. Be interesting to see, you know, how he performs. Mika jumps to the close guard, looks for a leg of J-Rod, now uses the opportunity to get to the top position. <laughs> That's what I mean right there. You know, it's a, that jumping attack in on the leg and then just took the back off. The, 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 he really combines these things well right into the mount. He's got the arm. He's going to walk up this arm on this left side, try to get looks like what will, what will hopefully turn into a katagatami for him. Um, he could also... Yeah, let's see how he, when he abandons this grip, if he can walk that arm up. There he goes. And J-Rod's gonna wanna do some little bumps to get that hand back in there. Mika can just stay right here. One hand to get out of the mount is a tough ordeal if Mika crosses his feet. He still did it. J-Rod's got a nice head and arm. Yep. I blinked for a second, all of a sudden I see jumping on each other. Yeah. yeah, he cleared him out with a stiff arm and then we will try to fly in guillotine, essentially. This is just such a great stylistic match. As you know, both love wrestling. Uh, you know, Mika more so... In can both make things happen from their wrestling, which is really good. Like, they can both get to the back well. Was... Shot there by J-Rod. Oh, in on the arm tight. Beautiful arm bar attack by Mika Galval. J-Rod twisting and turning, trying to escape. Mika Galval has that arm, and look at the escapes by J-Rod over and over and over again. Take the back here, that's what And he, he gets out, Jay Rodriguez with the back escape. Wow, there's that arm lock defense. And that's really, a, a, you take a page out of Vig Vinny Magalhaes' book in uh, ADCC many, many years ago when he was turned completely sideways, getting out of that arm lock. Judge in favor. Red. Mika Galvao gets the ju second judge's favor. Or sorry, the first judge's favor, I, my bad. But uh, man, that was awesome. Yeah, and, and really what J-Rod's doing is just trying to elevate the shoulder that's stuck in the arm lock. He's turning sideways. And then it really gives you a lot of maneuverability on the elbow, right? It's hard to break the elbow if the shoulder isn't isolated. The less uh, isolation you have of the shoulder, the less pressure on the elbow. So it really looks bad, but it's not really like break, uh, uh, dislocatable on that position. You know, it's hard, very, very difficult. Mika did the right thing to face those legs. Um, but J-Rod just kept turning out. Now, it will be interesting to see if Mika gets another deep arm lock, if J-Rod has the energy to do yeah. that entire sequence again. That took him about four times. There's about three or four arm locks that he had to, to, to get out of right there. Um, and that'll be the interesting.
Yeah. One on the head. Mika really doesn't have the best defense there on that collar tie at the moment. He's sort of letting that weight come through rather than either pulling himself to attach or clear it. Here's again, this nice snap down. Oh, nice takedown by J-Rod. Gets sucked in right into the head and arm, though. He's got to be careful. That's a really strong position that Mika Galvan is known for. But J-Rod doing a great job defending, breaks connection. Man, this match is it's great. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and I think those collar ties uh, from the feet are, are, are good for J-Rod. Again, Mika not really doing a, a great job of clearing those things out. This can wear you out. Mika Galvão got silver at the ADCC World Championship, but he's competed and won in pretty much every major competition in Brazil. Six and one in who's number one matches, known for his unorthodox submission attempts from all angles. And he's got, you know, he's, if you had to classify him, he's a counterattack arm bar specialist, yeah. you know? He's in on that leg. That was a beautiful little yeah. inversion. Let's see if he can capitalize on this. Uh, yep. Man, J-Rod looking so smooth, countering the takedown attempts of Nikki Rod, uh, sorry, of Mika Galvão. J-Rod's got that lightning fast wrestling. You know, as we said before, he's got those buggy chokes from everywhere. Great escapes, endless cardio. And he's also a contestant of the Who's, the, Who's Next reality show. Yeah. So he's got a ton of good experience against top level guys. It's great to see another Who's Next contestant on the Who's Number One stage. And he's gonna be potentially competing against another Who's Next uh, contestant, which is Andrew Tackett, if he gets through Mika Galvão here. Mika keep, should go back to north, south, circle around. I like that, what he did there is pass the legs, went to north, south. single. Looks like he's in on the guillotine yeah. pretty deep here. Right? That looks tight. Deep enough to get him on the mount. And now we've seen J-Rod struggle on the mount here now. We've seen him get pinned here and not be able to get out. So his arms are out of position, well out of position. This is this is tight. Yeah, because <laughs> J-Rod thumbs up. He's like, oh, I'm good. Don't worry. This is what he needs to do. He needs to get that right forearm underneath the waist there, so he can begin any type of sort of bridging and getting the left elbow back. Uh, Mika could use a right hand and push that wrist off. Judges favor. Red. So Mika can use right, his right hand, grip at the wrist, and begin push. Now that's worse for J-Rod. Now the arm is out. He's not going to be able to get it back in there so well now. And you know he's thumbs up at the moment, but if, if Mika takes some of that pressure out um, and moves into a C-clamp grip. So from the mount, it's a little bit better to C-clamp and put your hip on the floor. That way you get lower. The, the problem with finishing the mount in this stop, now he's getting lower. If he puts that, that right hip on the floor, and C clamps his hands to get a little bit wider base. That'll drop his shoulder lower to the ground. There, now he's going stage two, what I call. It's going to get tighter. Stage three is full cross side. It's going to get even tighter. Yeah, but J-Rod giving the thumbs up, saying he's okay once again. Mika going back to mount. Very interesting. Yep, right thing to do, I think. You, you, you don't finish. You go to back to the mount, and then you need to take the slack out of the elbow. J-Rod has now moved his arm to the other side. Better for him. So Mika's in mount, he's got the head and arm, and J-Rod's got to watch that right arm underneath the leg of Mika, because Mika could climb up for a triangle Certainly from could. the mount, a la Marcelo Garcia, Leo Vieira, ADCC 2011 finals. Yes, he certainly could. He stepped right over to a mounted triangle. He's lost the underhook now, so good for Jay. J-Rod could just hip, hip up, hit a little kipping escape. Let's see if Mika can get that back. It's very slippery. Still got an underhook, he could remount here. Oh, J-Rod cleared him out nicely. J-Rod with a little shoulder crunch attempt there. Mika makes connection. Or, sorry, Mika gets to the feet now, J-Rod. Man, this, is, this has been a good match. So good. Trying 
on the ducks. He's showing some ducks, a little super duck, but and that's good because that could get him to the back, J-Rod. So, again, I like these collar ties. He's got an inside tie with that left hand. He could really snap down, snap Mika down. He could move him around. Mika right now is not addressing these collar ties very well. He's got to snap him off or deal with him on the elbow. Nice double that's coming right here. <laughs> Thank you for turning that corner, J-Rod. Yeah, that's right. Almost right into the table. Thank you. Nice double shot, though. Yeah. That was on. That was. That was on. It was. If J-Rod wasn't such a gentleman, I think he would have smashed I, I, through. I think, I think so, yeah. too. They could have easily sent him right into our table. Absolutely. Two minutes, 14 seconds left. Feels like Mika's getting a little tired. Yeah, his pace is slow. It's, it's definitely changed. I mean, he's thrown a lot of stuff at Jay Rod. Yeah, right? and, but the thing is, is a uh, very Leandro Lowe ask. Yeah, Mika will look tired and make you know bait you into doing something, and that's where he does like a flying yeah. coyote guard arm. There, I that's just right. said it. That's right. That's where he does a flying attack, right? But he did that, not really attaining a connection. Yeah, and now J Rod's in a good passing position here. Looking for a knee cut. He's got to be careful, especially at the last minute and a half. J-Rod can turn on the pace. Look at that. J-Rod's still got some gas in that tank. He does, sure. yeah, he does. He's going to come hard this last minute, 20. And For a minute left. This guy's hands glass. Oh, beautiful. beautiful dump by Mika Galvan right into the buggy choke. Beautiful title drop. Wow. Exceptional. Nice times. Whoa. Oh! A suplex action. Mika having some fun. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face. 30 seconds left. Wow. That was crazy. That was. That was the first, I think that was the first suplex we've seen here yeah, in his number one. Like a, wow. Near pile driver esque. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop. Yeah, somebody just said it's AD, if they're off the mat, it's ADCC rules go. Yeah. Thirteen seconds left in this match, Sean Williams. What a match! Mika with the counter gets to the top position. Seven seconds left. Time. Right with a little push away with the foot here. All smiles. They shake hands. What a match! What a awesome. match! Awesome. That's right. Awesome. That was a fantastic and, match. You know. We see matches that we've had a lot of submissions tonight. We've had a couple of decisions, but when we say decision in that match, just that the name decision doesn't justify what occurred here. So many submission attempts, beautiful wrestling attempts, beautiful counters, flying everywhere. <laughs> Mika Galvão does what Mika Galvão does. Beautiful job. And J-Rod, just relentless pace, getting caught in some submissions, escaping. We saw that crazy arm bar. Here it is, one. And then he goes again, two, yep. and then he's about to go again, three, escapes the arm, and then a fourth time it gets <laughs> out of that arm. Just crazy submission defense by Jay Rodriguez. We see that drop at the end. Mika dumped Jay Rod. Jay Rod almost goes for the buggy choke. <laughs> Just an awesome match. Closing seconds. I wonder if we're going to see that suplex here. Here it is. Boom! <laughs> What a highlight for this match. Just a super entertaining match. And we're gonna go to the judge's decision officially now in a sec here. But I feel like we know who took home that win. Yeah, absolutely. But a, but a great performance by J-Rod. Yeah. Some really nice stuff. What a match. Yeah. Mika went over to say a few words to Nikki Ryan.
who uh, actually called uh, for a match with Mika in the last season number one after his victory over Renee Souza, but let's go to the judge's decision here. And your winner by decision out of the red corner, Mika Galvao. Mika Galvao gets the decision win in an all out war with J-Rod. Jay Rodriguez continues to impress. Beautiful job. Mika Galvao advances to the 170 pound finals here at the Who's Number One Night of Champions. Just an awesome match, guys. Guys, unlocked VIP tickets and a behind the scenes